Hello and welcome back to the course on deep learning. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about the restricted Boltzmann machine, and we're going to see how it learns and how it is applied in practice. Going to be a very interesting tutorial. Let's get started. So here we've got the standard Boltzmann machine or the full Boltzmann machine, where, as you remember, we've got all of these interconnections. Every single node connects to every single other node. And while in theory, this is a great model, and it probably can solve lots of different problems. In practice, it's very hard to implement. In fact, at some point, we run into a roadblock because we cannot simply cannot compute a full Boltzmann machine. And the reason for that is as you increase the number of nodes, the number of connections between them grows exponentially. So therefore, a different type of architecture was proposed, which is called the restricted Boltzmann machine. And this is what it looks like. So here, We've got exactly the same concept with the simple restriction that hidden nodes cannot connect to each other and visible nodes cannot connect to each other. Other than that, everything's the same. We've got connections which are undirected, meaning that they happen in both ways, both from visible nodes to hidden nodes and from hidden nodes to visible nodes. And that's the architecture of the restricted Boltzmann machine. And now we're going to talk about how it is, uh, how it works, how it's trained, and then how it's applied in practice. So let's get straight into it. We're going to look at an example with movies because uh, you can use a restricted Boltzmann machine to build a recommender system, and that's exactly what you're going to be doing in the practical tutorials with Hadalan. And this is going to help us and uh, help us build an intuitive understanding of the restricted Boltzmann machine, and also is going to help you. Uh, when you're walking through the practical tutorials. So let's say our restricted Boltzmann machine is going, or our recommender system is going to be uh, working on six movies. Of course, in reality, there's going to be lots and lots more movies. As you see, as you'll see in the practical tutorials, there'll be many, many, many more movies. But in our example, we're just going to work with six for simplicity's sake. And the way it's going to work is that we're going to, well, let's rewind a little bit. As you remember, a Boltzmann machine is a generative type of model. So it always constantly generates or is capable of generating these states, these different states of our system. And then in training, through feeding it uh, training data and through a process called contrastive divergence, which we'll discuss further down in this section, we help the Boltzmann machine to become very become a representation of our specific system, rather being a um, recommender system for any kind of possible and possible movies or any kind of recommender, possible and possible recommender system, we make it become more and more like uh, the recommender system that is associated with our specific set of movies that we're feeding into this system and with our specific training data. And so through that process, what this restricted Boltzmann machine is going to learn is it's going to understand how to allocate its hidden nodes to certain features. And this process is very, very similar to what we discussed in the convolutional neural networks. So for example, through the training process, uh, the restricted Boltzmann machine might identify that uh, genres are genres of movies are important features. For instance, genre A, B, C, D, and E. And the important thing to understand here is that it doesn't know that these are genres. It's just identifying certain features. We'll talk about this just in a second. Let's just, uh, to start off with, to get us more comfortable with this concept, well, let's kind of make it obvious that it doesn't have to be genres. For example, it could identify that genre A and B are important for the recommender system. But then uh, other important features include act an actor, uh, maybe Kevin Costner, an award, maybe an Oscar, a director, and Robert Zemeckis. So it will identify that these are important features. And so what is the, what does that mean, right? <laughs> You're probably, right now, uh, the main question that you might have in your head right now is what, what does that even mean when it's identified that a feature is important? Well, let's go through this. During the training process, we're feeding in lots and lots of rows to the restricted Boltzmann machine. And for example, these rows could look something like this, where we've got uh, movies as columns and then the users as rows. And here we've got the ratings or uh, the feedback that the, each user has left for the movie, whether they liked it, that's a one, or they didn't like it, a zero. And also the empty cells are totally fine as well because that just means that person hasn't watched uh, that movie. And through this process, as we're feeding in this data to this uh, restricted Boltzmann machine, what it is able to do is it's able to understand better our system and 
it is better to adjust itself to be a better representation of our system and understand and reflect, better reflect all of the interconnectivity that is that might be present here. Because ultimately, people have biases, people have preferences, uh, people have tastes, and th that is what is reflected in the data. If somebody liked movie two and three and didn't like movie one, just means that that's what their preference is. Somebody else might have liked movie one and might have not liked movie two and might have liked movie three. So basically, the data is t talking about the preferences of people, their tastes and their how how they prefer to view movies or how uh, how they're biased towards different movies. And that's what the restricted Boston machine is trying to explain. And for instance, it can, or not explain it, that's what it's trying to model. And for instance, it could pick up from our example here that uh, movies three, four, and six have very, usually have similar ratings. Not all the time, but very often when somebody likes movie three, four, they'll probably like movie six. Or when somebody likes movie six and four or six and three, they'll probably like movie four. Uh, six and three, they'll like movie four. Or if they don't like movie three and four, they're unlikely to like movie six. Not always. So here we've got an example of somebody didn't li like movie three, didn't like movie four. Um, they, they can be examples where you, it, it doesn't follow that rule, but it's those are going to be kind of more of an, ex an exception from the rule rather than um, a common. And this is just a very simplified example. But then what the restricted Boltzmann machine would do, it would identify this in the training and it would assign a node to look out for that feature. And even without knowing what that feature is, because as you can see, all the input it's getting are ones and zeros. It's not getting um, the genre of the movie, it's not getting the list of actors, it's not getting the awards that the movie won. One, it's only getting just these ones and zeros, but even from these similarities, it can establish that there probably is some feature that these movies have in common that is making people like them. So people who like these movies like that, not just they like that movie, they like that feature. And therefore, any other movie with that feature will is more is high is highly likely to be enjoyed by those people. And in our understanding as humans, that feature might be genre. And this is, again, this is very similar to what we had with convolutional neural networks. We might not have a descriptive term for that feature, but just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say that it's genre A, or it could be actor X. And that way it'll be easier for us to understand what's going on. But that's in essence what the restricted Boltzmann machine is doing. Through this input, it is, and through the training process, it is better and better understanding what certain what features these movies might have in common, or if there are features that these movies might have in common, and it's assigning its hidden nodes, or the weights are being assigned in such a way that the hidden nodes are ref becoming reflective of those specific features. So that's how the training of the RBM happens. Now let's have a look at something more fun. Let's have a look at how this would play out in action. So now that we've trained up our machine, our restricted bolts machine, we know that it, it, it is able to pick out these certain features and based on uh, what it's previously seen about thousands of our uh, users and their ratings. And now we're going to look at specific features. So let's say we it's picked out uh, drama as a feature, action, DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio as the actor in a movie, Oscar, whether or not the movie has won an Oscar, and Quentin Tarantino, uh, whether or not he was the director of the movie. And again, these are just for our benefit. In reality, the restricted Boltzmann machine has no idea whether <laughs> the, the director's name is Tarantino or not. It's just picking out a feature. This is our explanation of that feature for intuitive purposes. And now we're going to look at a couple of movies. So the machine is trained up on lots and lots of rows, and now we're going to input a new row into this restricted Boltzmann machine, into this recommender system, and we're going to see how it's going to go about giving us the prediction whether or not a person will like certain movies. This is the fun part. This is the actual application of the RBM. So let's let's start. We've got movies, The Matrix, The Fight Club, Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, Titanic, and The Departed. And I tried to pick movies which are uh, quite commonly seen. So hopefully you've seen all of these or at least most of these movies. If not, it doesn't really matter. We'll still go through their uh, you'll still be able to follow along with the examples, totally fine. Um, the Oscar here represents whether, whether or not a movie won an Oscar, just so that we there's no questions about that. Um, and the Oscar here we're talking about is the 
uh, Best Picture Oscar. So an Oscar is an Academy Award, and there's lots of different Academy Awards. Uh, for instance, they can. They, it's pretty much. It's, it's the, these are synonymous terms. There's lots of different types of Oscars. You could get an Oscar for being the best actor. You could get an Oscar for the best sound effects in your movie uh, or the best um, visual effects. Well, this this specific Oscar we're talking about is the best picture, and there's only one of those per year. Yeah. So this these are the movies that we're looking at, and now let's see this person that we're. We're trying to make a recommendation for what have what have they seen, what they haven't seen, what they've rated, and how they've rated it. So they've seen the Matrix. They didn't like the Matrix. They put a zero. So one is like, zero is dislike. Fight Club. They haven't seen the Fight Club. Forrest Gump. They've seen Forrest Gump and they liked the movie. Uh, Pulp Fiction. They've seen Pulp Fiction, but they didn't like the movie. Titanic. They've seen it and they've liked it. Uh, and The Departed. They haven't seen that movie. And now we want to make a recommendation for this person. Will they like Fight Club or not? Will they like The Departed or not? So how does the restricted Boltzmann machine go about this? Now, now we're finally getting to the to the essence. We're finally getting to the application. So this is going to be it's going to be interesting. All right. So we're going to go through this step by step, and we're going to assess which of these nodes are going to activate for this specific user. So the Boltzmann machine is trained up. It already knows about features and similarities. Now is going to try to assess which of these features are going to activate. And think very. Uh, it could be useful to think of it as in the convolutional neural network uh, uh, analogy. In there, we would feed in a picture into our convolutional neural network, and it would certain features would highlight, certain features would light up if they are present in that picture. Same thing here. We're feeding in a row into our restricted Boltzmann machine, and certain features are going to light up if they are present in this user's tastes and preferences and likes and biases. That's the that's a kind of in, very intuitive what was happening in the background. This very intuitive explanation was happening in the background. So let's go through this. We're gonna go. We start, we're gonna start with drama. So in terms of drama, which movies here are drama? We know that Matrix is not drama. Fight Club is not drama. Forrest Gump is drama. It's actually I looked it up. It's actually comedy, and then it's drama. But we don't have comedy here. So it's for our, our purposes drama. Pulp Fiction is not drama. Uh, Titanic is drama, and The Departed is drama. But we don't have data for The Departed, right? So this Boston machine can only learn from these two, right? It can only say, all right, so this person liked Forrest Gump, and this person liked The Titanic. And based on that, this node is going to light up, and it's going to, we're going to light it up symbolically in green, meaning that it's activated, and it's, uh, that means this person likes drama, uh, drama movies. Next, uh, action. And you can see that the action movies we have here are The Matrix, Fight Club, and Pulp Fiction, and Departed. We have four action movies. But out of them, we only have data for The Matrix and Pulp Fiction, and these, both of these, this person didn't like, so it's going to light up in red. DiCaprio. So out of all of these movies, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is present in Titanic and The Departed. And based on this, uh, just this one, uh, one movie, the DiCaprio node is going to light up green. Oscar. So we've got three Oscar movies. Uh, we only have data for Forrest Gump and Titanic, and based on those, uh, the person liked both, the note is going to light up green. And finally, Tarantino. The only movie with Tarantino as the director here is Pulp Fiction, out of all of them, and uh, the person did not like Tarantino, that movie, and therefore this note is going to light up red. So there we go. That's the first pass, uh, everything from our visible nodes goes into our hidden nodes, and our hidden nodes now, we know which ones are activated. And now the backward pass happens. Now what happens is um, the Boltzmann machine is going to try to reconstruct our input. It's going to, I'm going to show this by flashing them. So basically, that's exactly what happens in the process. Whether you're training, and we didn't mention this during the training process, and but this is what happens during training as well. So during training and during this is in, in essence a test what the Boltzmann machine does is it accepts values into the hidden nodes and then it tries to reconstruct your inputs based on those hidden nodes if during training if the reconstruction is incorrect then everything is adjusted the weights are adjusted and then we reconstruct again and again and again but now it's a test so we're actually uh, inputting a certain row and we want to get our predictions so basically there is not going to be any adjusting of weights we're just going to see how the Boltzmann machine basically reconstructs these rows and moreover we're not going to care about the movies that we already have ratings for 
Um, that's what the training part of the Bolson machine is for. Here, we're only going to uh, care about the movies where we don't have ratings and we're going to use the values it reconstructs as predictions. So once again, from here, Bolson machine is going to be reconstructing these input values based on what it's learned. And so let's let's go. How is it going to reconstruct Fight Club? Well, Fight Club is going to look at all of the nodes and find out based on what it learned pre from the training is going to really know which nodes actually connect to Fight Club. Is it a drama movie? No, it's not. Is it an action movie? Yes, it is. Um, so this, that one's going to light up. Is it? Does it have DiCaprio in it? No, it doesn't. Did this movie win an Oscar? It hasn't. And um, is the Tarantino the director of this movie? No, he's not. That's in our in our uh, understanding, because we know these things, in the Boltzmann machine's understanding, it'll be like, does, does this, does is this node connected to this node? No. Is this node connected to this node? Yes. Is this node connected to this node? No. This to, to this no. This to this no. So it wouldn't know these words, but it would know these connections. It would know these associations based on the weights that it had determined during training. And based on this one connection, we know this one lit up in red, and therefore, Fight Club is going to be a movie that this person is not going to like. Then, next one. So now we're going to talk about The Departed. So the recommendation here is no. Uh, now let's talk about The Departed. Again, it's going to go through its nodes. It's going to know the connections, right? It, just by the weights the, from which it had established during training. It's going to know uh, these connections. And it will know here that uh, The Departed is connected to this node, is connected to this node, is connected to this node, connected to this node, is not connected to this node. The weight here is, is low or very insignificant. And in our terms, in human language, why is that? Well, because this node is responsible for drama movies, it's a drama movie. This node is responsible for action movies, it's an action movie. This node is responsible for DiCaprio movies, it does have DiCaprio in it. This movie, this node is responsible uh, for Oscar movies. It does have, it did have an Oscar, did win an Oscar. And therefore, based on this, we can see this node votes yes, 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 this vote node votes no. So the answer in simplistic terms is yes, you are going to most likely enjoy that movie or that user is going to enjoy that movie. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.